This video is about creating a web service from a WSDL file. Now, we don't use an existing one, we also create the WSDL file. So, first we have to create our web application project. And we are going to call it Hello Service from WSDL. Again, we're using Glassfish, no special technologies. So, last time what we did, we created a Java program used Java web service annotations to make the Java program a web service. Now we're using a top-down approach by first creating a WSDL file and from that WSDL file create the Java stubs for the server. Now to create a WSDL file we say new WSDL document. If it not, does not appear here you go into others and you find XML and you find WSDL document. Now we call this uh, Hello World and we can actually already here provide a target nams namespace. We're going to say this is HTTP slash slash Hello World WS. Now we have the choice uh, to say we want a concrete WSDL document which uh, generates also bindings and ports and uh, if we have only one operation this is actually fine but let's uh, assume we will have later more operations so we actually choose an abstract WSDL document. So we say next and now we can define the port type and uh, let's say hello world port type is okay hello world operation actually we would just call it hello world we don't want to call it hello world operation the operation type is a request response we send a message out and we want to have a response the request should have an argument which is of type string. Here we can select different types. The name of the argument is part1. That is uh, fine. And then uh, we have an output and the output uh, part is part1 and that is actually not so good. So the input part and the output part should be different otherwise uh, we will get some uh, special classes uh, are being generated to actually hold the value that is being passed in and out. Now we call this just output. That's it. We don't have any fault elements. Here, generation of partner links. That we will come later to when we just, uh, talk about people. At the moment we don't need this. And uh, we have our first operation and we finish. So the visit helps you creating one operation. If you want to create more operations then you have to go here to the port type and say add our operation and then you will get another operation. Now the editor itself allows you to see the contents of the XML in an abstract way. Here you have first the types and we don't have any special types in this document. Any imports that could be uh, WSAL imports but also XML schema imports then our message is being exchanged the hello world request as we can see it has a part which is of type string and the response which has an output which is of type also of type string then we have our port types and we have one port type which has exactly one operation the hello world operation and we can see it's a request response operation because it has an outgoing message and it has an incoming message. 
and of course the message uh, for uh, the incoming message is the hello world request and the output is the hello world response. We don't have yet any bindings services. That is because we are talking about an abstract WSDL document that does not have yet the implementation part. But if we want to implement a web service, we actually have to define the implementation part. To do this, the best way is actually to uh, select the type after you have all operations implemented here and then you say add binding and service port it will propose you uh, a name that is okay the binding type here you have various choices but we want to exchange using soap or soap 1.2 the binding subtype is as you can see is RPC literal document literal or RPC encoded in our example we take an RPC literal approach and in addition to the binding you also want to have a service port and here I just make it the name a little bit shorter it should just called hello world port and then we say OK and we can see that we have generated our bindings and that we have generated our service and very important that our service contains a SOAP address and the value of the SOAP address we can see here it's HTTP localhost and then a variable HTTP a default port service now this is not the real SOAP address under which uh, the service will be published and that is important um, but later when we ask for WSDL of that our service then Glassfish will replace this SOAP address with the correct one however the SOAP address will be later used for when we generate uh, people services so we have we save the WSDL file here and that is our file we use to generate our web service form. Now here we say uh, new web service now from WSDL and we call this hello world and we define again a package hello world WS in this case. Now we have to provide uh, the uh, file name of the WSDL we just, just created. So it will be, in my case, it's under users, HUB, and uh, under NetBeans projects. And there you have a hello uh, a service from WSDL, then under source, under Java, and here finally we have our hello world WSDL. We select it, we open it. Here there is an error message. If you just chose the abstract um, WSDL and did not create the bindings and the port, then this will stay red. But now we have created uh, binding and port, so this will be the port we choose. WSDL files could have several ports, so we could actually choose any port, but we have only created one port here. So we finish and we get here our parsing, building successful, uh, the uh, source code that we have to fill in is has been created. And here we can see that now our web service annotation is a little bit more complex because now it needs to actually uh, generate the information or use the names provided by me in the WSDL file and not coming from the Java program. So we have the service name defined, we have the port name defined, it should not be the default names. Now we have an import interface, so endpoint interface is it's this. So this is one of the types being generated by uh, WS import then we have the target namespace that is the namespace we have provided with the WSDL wizard and then we have the location of the WSDL file 
What we now have to do is to actually fill out this implementation by doing our hello world and saying uh, return hello plus our argument, which is part one, as you can see, and that's it. So we deploy our service. And we can see that the service has been deployed. Now we can check on our client console, our admin console, that uh, the service is running. View admin console. We log in. Now, these error messages below uh, relate to that this is a slightly older version of GlassFish and some services don't work anymore as they worked when this was uh, uh, made the first time. Now we look at web service. Here we have our web service and it's always good to check the WSDL file. If the WSDL file is generated, then usually the web service works. So we can see the WSDL file is generated and the most important part here is that you can see that this information is different from the information that you see in the WSDL file that we have created. So let's go there. And here we look into the SOAP address part. You can see these two are different. Now what really matters if you want to look and want to use the WS, uh, the web service, then you will have to use the one that is generated by GlassFish because that is the one that uh, where the web service is actually deployed. So, when you create now a client, if I create here my Java uh, a client, hello world client from WSDL, then when I create a service reference here, so new uh, web service client, then what I have to do is I have to use that uh, uh, URL here, and I have to append to this WSDL. That will get me the WSDL of that service. It's a convention, not necessarily everybody keeps that convention that if you have a service and you put a question mark WSDL at the end of the service address, then you get the WSDL file and you can see everything worked and now you can create your JUnit uh, program that uses this web service reference.